Hello and welcome to another retro course, Chinese knockoffs. And today we're going to be taking a look at yet another retro arcade mini. Um, now, the last one we did was actually the retro arcade FC, which is basically just a Famicom clone in this uh, Neo Geo Mini um, lookalike shell. This one is arcade stuff, so I wonder if it's going to be any better. Taking a look around the side of the box, you can see we've got the same pictures, including the little joy pads, which this machine doesn't actually come with, so that's kind of weird. And we've got some specs on the side there. Okay, let's take a look inside and see what we get. I think we pretty much know what we get. Okay, I do like the way these are packaged. So we get the actual console itself. We'll just put that there. And at the bottom, we have uh, a manual. And uh, yeah, that's it, two cables. Okay, let's move this to one side. Okay, so the first cable we have is the typical mini USB to standard USB that's to charge the machine up. Um, typical, uh, you know, phone charger will do that. And then we have this cable here, which is basically a two 3.5 millimeter uh, jacks on it. You know, the type that your, you know, your stereo headphones have. Now this jack is actually kind of uh, unusual to these devices. What this does, is connects two of these devices together so you can actually play versus mode on fighting games yeah so you can have two cabinets you know back to back which is pretty cool so yeah unfortunately i only have one of these devices so i can't check it out but that is a nice interesting feature and um the manual oh okay the manual looking at it is actually from the retro arcade fc oh yes so this isn't even the correct manual for this device because this isn't the FC, this is the uh, mini, the arcade version. And again, it shows you the two control pads there, which you don't get in this. Uh, let's see if the inside is the same. Yeah, it's the same instructions as the retro uh, arcade FC. All right, so yeah. Let's take a look at the machine itself. Okay, on this side, we have the volume control. On the back, we have the... Um, TFT card or micro SD card slot so you can install your own ROMs on there. There's your extension port, that's how you connect two of these units together. And there you have the micro, uh, sorry, the mini USB. So you can uh, power the machine up and charge the battery. On this side, we have the on and off switch. On the bottom, we have a Nokia phone style lithium battery there. Apparently, that will give us six hours of gameplay. And we got the big speaker grill. On the front of the machine, we have the face buttons, we have a reset, select, and the start button there. And yes, it's another one of those analog sticks. Actually, talking about the analog stick, somebody in the comments mentioned to me that I don't know what an analog stick is. Yeah, right. This is an analog stick, and um, it acts in a digital fashion, as we all know, well, most of us know, <laughs> just like a modern game, uh, modern uh, controller for modern games machine. This is an analog stick, but when you control the menus on the, uh, you know, the front end of the machine, it acts as a digital controller, just like the D-pad does. This is exactly the same as one of these. So yeah, it's an analog stick. So that also means you've got a bit of a dead zone in the center because it doesn't actually register the move until it reaches, you know, pretty much the end of the travel, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, so what we're going to do is boot this up and see what it looks like running. Time to change the camera lens. Okay, so this is going to be kind of awkward to use because this thing has no external controllers on it. I've got to um, basically film myself using the actual machine. And we can't connect this up to a TV either. There's no um, TV out on it. So taking a look at the menu, we can see it's been slightly redesigned from the uh, previous model. Usual things, you can look at pictures, videos, uh, listen to music on it. But we, we're here for the games, so let's take a look at the games. So we've got two options, we've got double games, games, and SD card. Let's take a look at the double game section first, see what that's all about. Okay, so straight away we can see it's the arcade stuff. The typical assortment of Capcom CPS games. Okay, so we can choose single player. Create a server or search a server. So basically, if I want to be player one, I choose creating a server. And what that will do is send a signal to the other machine 
uh, telling it that I'm waiting to play this game in two-player mode. And of course, if the other player decides to choose creating a server, then I would use this option, search a server. It would find the other person's machine and then it would connect to it so we can play a two-player game. Um, doing uh, creating a server or searching a server without another machine connected will just crash the console like this. So it's uh, trying to create a server and yeah, it just crashed. But apparently, if you have two of these connected up, it will uh, join the other machine. Also, I've been told. So I wonder how good the emulation is going to be. Hopefully it's going to be good. Nope, that coin <laughs> sound effect did not sound good. All right. Yeah, that sound is not good, is it? Now see, we've got kick, kick, punch, punch, and we're missing two buttons here. Wow, that sounds awful. Turn that down a little bit. Okay. Let's right, see if we can do a move on this thing. Uh, yes, we can. Sorry that my fingers are in the way of the screen. You can't see anything, can you? Yeah, this stick is not great for doing moves. It's kind of difficult. Here you go, that's better. You can see the screen easier now without my big clunky hands in the way. Talking about the screen, I must say that it's actually pretty clear. Uh, you're looking at this on an angle in the video and I'm sure you can see it just fine. Any weird effects that might be on the screen are caused by the camera picking them up. You can't see any weird effects in real life. Okay, the sound of Final Fight is also a little bit off. But the speed is perfectly fine, no problems there. Okay. Okay, here we are with Super Puzzle Fighter. And this one sounds okay. So it seems that CPS 1 games don't sound too good, while CPS 2 games seem to sound perfectly fine. Yeah, that doesn't have a problem with the sound. That sounds good. Let's just crank up the volume a bit, see how it goes. No problem at all. All right, let's check out another CPS2 game. Okay, this is a Muscle Bomber or Saturday Night Slam Masters. I believe this is a CPS2 game. And as you can hear, it sounds perfectly fine. All right, now this is pretty cool. Okay, so this is Forgotten Worlds, and this is a CPS 1 game. I wonder how the audio is. Yeah, not very good. So yeah, obviously this machine has issues with the CPS 1 emulation. The sound is not good on the CPS 1 games. But CPS 2 games, not a problem. But here's the good point. This machine is basically running on the same hardware as the uh, RS-97 did, or very similar hardware. 
In other words, it's running on the Dingu platform, which means this can be hacked and updated with a new firmware, with brand new emulators, to make it sound and work much, much better. So that's actually something really uh, to keep in mind. But of course, I want to show you this machine out of the box, so you have an idea of what you're getting when you buy it new. Okay, so yeah, there's 20 uh, Capcom CPS games there, um, about half CPS 1, half CPS 2. Alright, uh, let's go back and let's check out uh, game. Oh, okay, so regular games seem to be a mixture. How many kids? 500 in one! Bloody hell! Alright, let's see what we got. These are all uh, Game Boy Advance games here. Yeah, these are Game Boy Advance. All right, let's just start up uh, a Game Boy Advance game, see how they run. All right. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Now, if I remember from the PlayStation game, you can bounce on these by pushing down, is it? How does it work? Ah, that's it. Yeah, that's uh, reasonable, I guess. Same save state option there. Okay, let's uh, keep scrolling down. Can we skip pages? Yeah, we can. Uh, Cabbage Dream... Okay, these are Super Famicom games or SNES games. Yeah, Alien vs Predator. <laughs> That's really bad on the Super Nintendo. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's choose Contra. See how that runs. Yeah, SFC, Super Famicom format. So yeah, Super Famicom or SNES games. Now, typically on the uh, RS ninety seven platform, yeah, the SNES emulation is not too good. But don't worry, with a hack you can improve that. Just change the emulator. Usually the speed's good, but the sound's really bad. Yeah, that is not ideal, is it? Yeah, the sound is off, and... Uh, yeah, the speed is not quite there. It's a little bit jerky. And it's actually quite hard to play at an angle. <laughs> Alright. Let's see, what other formats we got? F0, that's, uh, these are all Super Famicom games. Man, there's quite a lot of Super Famicom games on here. Uh, okay, let's see. First class Super Famicom. Okay, here we go. Mega Drive games. Streets of Rage, The Revenge of Shinobi. Um, oh, we've got some shooters on there. Nice. Fire Shark, Twin Cobra. Gunstar Heroes, Sonic. Alright, we got some good games here on the Mega Drive. Uh, Double Dragon 2 is not a good game on the Mega Drive. Let's take a look at uh, the Revenge of Shinobi. See how that works. No sound! Oh well, okay. Maybe the sound's just very low. Um. Yeah, no sound. If we turn it up, N no sound at all. Okay, well that is not good, is it? All right. Well, uh, let's try a different game. This one has no sound either. Um, maybe we've got to reset the console. Let's just switch it off and switch it back on. Let's just go back to the Super Famicom uh, games. Oh. The uh, Game Boy Advance games, and uh, let's see if they have sound. Maybe I've broken it. No, that's got sound. Okay, well, it seems Mega Drive emulation doesn't have sound. What the hell? Oh, hang on. No, we got the sound back here now. Maybe something went wrong with it. Let's try again.
Yeah, no sound. Okay, we'll try one more Mega Drive game. No sound. Okay, well there we have it. Mega Drive em emulation has no sound at all. That is not good. Speed is fine though. But, as I mentioned before, you can hack this and change the emulators. Put an emulator on there that does work. Alright, well, Mega Drive, no sound. Okay, let's check out another game. What other formats do we have on here? Okay, we've got NES games. Let's give one of those a try. They have sound. Kind of messed up sound, though. Okay, so let's check out the micro SD card support. Okay, SD card. <laughs> it doesn't list anything, uh, but no worries. We can uh, check that out. Oops, by going, no, 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 no. By going to the file manager, SD card, and here we go. So as you can see, I put a lot of games on here on the SD card, various formats. So here we got uh, Super Wild Tracks, a Super FX game. Let's see if we can uh, run this. But how well will it work? Yeah, that's slowing down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be playable at all, is it? Yeah, I think Super FX games are a no go on this. We can't even get the exit menu to come up. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's try a uh, Super Threads 2X game. Nope, doesn't work with them. Okay, this is an Atari 2600 game. Nope. Uh, NES games, we know NES games work. Uh, actually, let's check out Gauntlet 2, because normally this doesn't work. It works. stuff but I can't see my weapon come oh there we go <laughs> there's my weapon well that's unusual because normally this game won't even play on uh, these uh, type of machines all right uh, Game Boy Advance game we know they'll play uh, Game Boy game let's see if we can run a Game Boy game on it nope Alright, how about the Game Gear game? Nope. Uh, El Viento, Mega Drive, uh, Bin File, we know they work. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Oh, let's try, let's just try it, see if we get any sound. Absolutely nothing, no sound whatsoever. Yeah. Alright. Virtual Racing. Will it run that? Yeah, but again, no sound. Yeah, no polygons either. Okay, Sega Master System games, can we run those? Nope. Sega Master System game in bin format? Ooh. No, <laughs> it reset the machine, okay. Uh, MAME file, can we run MAME files on this? Ooh, it's uh, recognized it as an arcade format. No, <laughs> it just reset. 
it's still trying to load something too by the looks of it. Uh, okay, Nintendo 64, will that run? Probably not. Nope. Uh, Neo Geo format, will that run? Nope, that just reset the machine. Wow, it doesn't have a lot of support built in, does it, out of the factory? Okay, uh, Commodore 64 format. Thinks it's an arcade game. No, it's not running it. CPC there isn't going to work, is it? Alright. I think we should just give up here. None of these are going to work. Uh, yeah. Alright, so anyway. There. Oh, PC Engine. Let's try PC Engine. Nope. Doesn't run PC Engine. To be expected. So we've taken a look at the Retro Arcade Mini in action and to be honest uh, the CPS2 stuff is absolutely great on it but anything else is not that hot. Um, it's playing a video here at the moment, one that's built into it for uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit or something. Uh, but yeah, um, as it comes from the factory maybe not the greatest but this can be hacked and I'll put a link in the video description down below to a website where you can hack it. And this device was provided to us from TomTop. And I'll also provide a link to buy this machine from TomTop from their site, along with a discount code, so you can get it for an even cheaper price than it already is, which is not bad at all. So anyway, I think if you hack it and add new emulators, um, it's gonna be a lot better than it is. Uh, the actual hardware in it is perfectly capable of running Neo Geo, 8-bit, 16-bit games. It's probably not gonna run your PlayStation very well. But as I said, your 8-bit, 16-bit, uh, CPS1, CPS2, Neo Geo games should work perfectly fine on this, along with other emulators, uh, you know, for home computers as well. And I just noticed it's kind of cool. You can see the back of the screen <laughs> through the case. Yeah, not bad at all. All right, anyway, so check out the link in the video description down below if you're interested in picking one of these up. And I'll be back next week with yet another Chinese knockoffs.